Well, hello, crochet friends, and it's good to be back here in my studio, and welcome back to my channel. And um, so today I am doing number seven in the Granny Circle Along, and I'm going to be talking about this scarf. And uh, I've been a little bit busy with deadlines and my book photography and things like that for, you know, a good three or four weeks and so it's good to get back to crochet and some tutorials and uh, show you how I finish up my scarf. I'm going to be starting a pillow of squircle. So this is the squircle scarf and I've got a stack of squircles here to do a pillow. And by the way, thank you so much for all your kind comments about the day before. Um, so last week was the photo shoot here at my house all week long. And the day before that, I did a quick tour of my new studio loft up here, um, my crochet room, my sewing room, all the rooms that I you know, do all my different tasks and work in. And um, I did a quick tour of that and I explained it and so many kind comments. Thank you so very much. I'm really enjoying the space and having a place to put everything and to be able to separate, you know, the different things that I do into different areas so that I'm much more organized so that I can, you know, do things. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to do them quicker, but just in a more organized fashion. I love organization. That's always my goal is I'm always organizing and reorganizing. Uh, I think we all are as crafters. And so, um, Anyway, thank you so much for the kind comments about my new space, and I am really enjoying it. And so let me talk to you about this scarf here. Okay, so remember I showed you the squircles when I had started them, and I had shown you this scarf that I had made right here. Okay, and it's got the little scalloped edge. This I made out of 18 squircles. I like quite a long scarf. So I made 18 squircles and then I bordered them, you know, when I made the squircle. First, you know, of course, they're the granny circles. And then when I made them into a square, I bordered them all with the same color. This color happens to be raisin. Okay, and I love this scarf so much I wanted to make one just like it and do it in tea rows and border in tea rows. So it's more like spring and summer. Now I've already shown you in my last crochet series of my granny square along this little scarf that I did with denim and I did this with a three round granny square and I did that whole entire tutorial about how you join the squares and everything like that which is exactly the same thing but I just wanted to show you again for those of you who may you know maybe didn't follow that and have just jumped in on the granny circle along I'm going to show you again how to join those and um so what I've done so far is I've done, I mean, I'm almost done, really. So I've joined all of the 18 squares together. I'm just gonna kind of unroll it so you can see. And I just did these scrappy colors with the circles that I, you know, the granny circles that I have going that I've shown you. The only thing that I have left to do is do this little scalloped border on the edge. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, last. But um, are, you may be wondering how I'm going to show you how to do this if I've already finished with this, but I also um, talked about my pillows that I make with squircles. And so I've got a pillow that I've got started. And so what I'm doing with this is I'm joining, I'm doing 16 squares for the top of the pillow. Here's my pillow form. This is just a pillow form that I've had for a while. It's kind of big to, you know, I just kind of wanted to show you. It's kind of big to show, you know, I can't get the whole thing in. But as you know, if you're following me, you know that I like to buy pre-made pillows for a really good price when I find them. And then I always buy them when I know that I have a yarn color that matches. And then I will use that color as the base color, the finishing joining color. And then it goes really good on the pillow and I just crochet onto the pillow and that kind of helps me gauge my size and everything that I need to do. So for this one, I'm doing four across, four rows of four across. But um, joining these rows is exactly the same way that you join these rows, okay, for the scarf. 
So that's how I'm going to show you how I do it. So I'm gonna kind of talk about the scarf again at the very end when I show you the scallop, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I join my um, squares together or squircles, whatever you want to call them. It's the exact same way that I join granny squares Again, just like when I've showed you in my um, my granny square along in my afghan and my pillows, everything in there. It's the exact same method. We have already joined these into squares. I just call them squircles because I started with the granny squircle, uh, granny circle turned it into a square, which I call squircles. But it's once they're a square, it's the exact same method. But again, I'm going to go over it again. So. I've got these joined right here. I will show you how I um, weave in those ends too. So see, that's what my ends look like. And again, I like to keep a six inch approximately, I don't measure, but about six inch tail because I like to have plenty of room to weave in. And so let me grab my denim yarn since I'm using denim for this. Put on my glasses so I can see a little bit closer. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put wrong sides together. Now, this is the wrong side and this is the right side. If you are a beginner, and I'm just going to say this again, you may want to take one of these stitch markers and put on the wrong side right here. And just so that you can tell until you can get to the point where you can tell the difference of what the wrong side and right side looks like. It just, you know, it doesn't take too long to figure that out after you've, you know, crocheted for a bit. But this is, again, once again, here's the wrong side, here's the right side. And so I'm going to put, um, join my, I think I said right sides, but I'm going to put my wrong sides together. You can do it two ways. If you put your wrong sides together, like I'm going to for this, then your single crochet, which is what we're joining them with, will be raised, okay? And I really like that look. Most of the time, that's what I do. I like that raised look. If you don't want the, if you don't want the raised look and you want the raised part to be on the back, it would just kind of look like that, more smooth, then you would put your right sides together so that your wrong sides would be facing out, okay? But I'm going to be joining with the right sides together Excuse me, I keep saying the wrong. I'm going to be joining with the wrong sides together so that my single crochet will be raised on the right side. Okay, I hope I clarified that enough. <laughs> All right. I like to have my yarn bowl on the left of me. And I'm just going to leave a, you know, approximate six inch tail or longer. And what I'm gonna do is I have these two together and I'm going to just go in the corners. Remember we have three chains in the corners of a squircle. And I'm going to just simply do one single crochet to join in that hole, okay? And that's gonna kind of start right there. Then I'm gonna join in, I'm gonna go in and take these top two See, on that very top right there, how there's a chain. You know what, I'm gonna pull in, I'm gonna pull in one of my cutting mats to see if maybe I can have, hang on. See if I can have something that's a little bit better to see the yarn, let's see. Whatever has the most contrast, let's do this. Let's try that. Okay, hopefully that has a little bit more contrast. All right, so let's kind of start back up where we left off. So I've done one single crochet to join these two in the hole. Now I'm going to go into the top of the first double crochet. See how we've got double crochet, double crochet, double crochet, all, you know, we've got four sets of those. So we're going to be um, going into the top two, not just the first, first or the last one, but the top two of that one and then the top two of the second one. So you're going to have four. You're gonna have four of those on your hook and then, you know, your one yarn you always have, so you should have five. Then you're just gonna grab it 
and do your single crochet. Okay, so, and then you're just gonna go into the next one, go into the top, grab it, wrap around, go through two to do your single crochet. So now I'm going into the third double crochet in that first set. Okay, so, so far, let me pull this up so I don't lose my stitch. But so far, this is what this is looking like. Okay, I've done a single crochet here and then a single crochet in the, in the tops of each of these double crochets. And I'm just gonna continue going along. Now, because we have um, 12 double crochets, because four times three is 12, so we have 12. We're gonna end up doing 14 all the way across because we're gonna start with a single crochet and then do the single crochet in the top. Of all 12, and then we're gonna end in the, in the last hole here with another single crochet. And so we'll do 14 total to go across there. And I don't do it really loose, I don't do it super tight, I just, I try not to pull at all, I just do regular, regular tension. And again, that comes with practice, and chances are that you'll probably end up doing the same tension on joining them as you did with actually making your squircles, you know, because that's just what you have been doing and what comes natural to you at this point. I use the same size hook which is an E to, you know, to do the joining. This is my favorite way to join granny squares. I think it's very relaxing. Okay, so now I've done, I've got one more left for the tops of all the double crochets and then the corner right here. Okay, and then I just pull that into a loop, just like I'm ending everything that I've shown you and pull it through and pull tight. And now I've got those two joined, okay? So that's how you join those. And I just go along when I'm laying my scarf out. So I'm gonna pull this scarf back in. When I'm laying my scarf out, I just simply lay it out in a row on the table or on the floor or something of um, how I think it looks good. And then I just take a picture on my phone so that I don't lose the order and then I can just stack them back up again. And if I forget what order they went in or which one, two I need to join together, then you know you can join them by twos and then join all those together however you wanna do it or just singly at a time. And that's how I do it. And then I just delete the picture off when it's off of my phone and when that's finished, okay? So that's how I join them. Now after joining them, I go along, so pretend, I know this is only four long, but you know, you can pretend that um, this is 18 long or however long your scarf is going to be. I just grab a needle and I, I do, I'll just show you on this one so that it's a little bit easier to see. And so I turn around to the back side and I just join all of the, all of the ones that are on one side and then turn around and join all the other ones. And what I do is I just go in behind my row of single crochets and just kind of put my needle back there and kind of weave in. And I just like to do my needle first, or at least to the first half. And then it's easier for me with this big eye to just go ahead and thread that in. And then I just pull it through. I'm not worrying about tightness or looseness or anything. If I pull it too tight, I can always loosen it up. Right now, I'm just worried, or I, I don't know if I'm saying worried, I'm just concentrating on um, just weaving these through. And you can see, I cannot see the needle through the front. But again, these um, that means your thread, your yarn isn't gonna come through the front. But even if it does a little bit, it's, it's all the same color. It's just not gonna matter. So I like to go all the way through to the other end and then I kind of pull so that it's even, a little bit even. Okay, so it's not too tight, not too loose. I kind of look here 
and I, you know, I like this little dip here in the sides. You can see where this little dip is where you join them. I like that, how that looks on the scarves, and I've done that on purpose. If you didn't want a dip here, you could do two when you're joining them. You could do two single crochets in the holes, and that would make it a little bit more even. But I kind of like that little lacy effect that happens. And so I'm, I've still got this one on this side, and I just trim this off even, okay, once I've pulled it to where I want. And now I've added just a little bit of strength, just from the thickness of that yarn right there. And then I would just go ahead and do the whole entire side. I'll go ahead and thread that first anyway. And then I'm just going to do the exact same thing, just going the opposite way. So you've got one, one of your tail ends going one way and the other going the other way. And I just simply weave them through and this doesn't really take long at all. I do this when I'm, you know, listening to a book or watching TV with Mr. Honey or something. And I just, or even in the truck when I'm, you know, going camping, this is a good thing, good thing to do. And so I really like that steadiness there. So like I say, I just kind of save it for a time when I can weave in my ends and I enjoy that part. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take these out. And so now I've got two of those joined together. And so I'm going to do four rows like this for the front of the pillow. And, I'll, you know, I'll talk about the pillow in my next video. I am going to go on vacation tomorrow for a week. I'm going to see my friend uh, Christy. We're taking our boat. We're going fishing. We're going to stitch and and all of that stuff, so I definitely will be taking my crochet. And so when I get back, I'll do another video and show you the progress on my pillow and talk to you more about the steps. And, you know, I'll probably have one side complete, hopefully, so I can show you one side how it looks and then the other side how I'm doing it. But, so let's let's go get back to the scarf. So I'm gonna put T rows in here in my bowl because I want to show you, um, how to do that little scallop. But before I do that, I wanted to tell you, once I've woven these ends in, again, pretend this is the scarf, once I've woven this, so pretend that this is 18, and, 18 squircles long, then I go ahead and do a single crochet just all the way around the edge. You don't have to do that, it's already got a nice edge, but I just kinda like how that adds a little bit See, so you can see what this looks like with that little edge at, added. And see, again, I like that little, how it goes in a little bit right there from joining them with just one single crochet on each end in the hole. And um, so I go ahead and do that all the way around, just go all the way around the, around the bottom. When I get to these corners, I do three single crochets to turn the corner. Okay, all the way around. And once I've done that, I just feel like, okay, it's smooth, it's nice. And um, then I go ahead and do the scallop. So I've done this scallop. And this is a super easy, easy one. And um, which I most of the time do. I just like to use um, double crochets usually and then like a slip stitch. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we're gonna start, um, I'm not gonna start in the hole, I'm actually gonna start in chains now because I want it to kind of go even. And so here's the top of the double crochet here. I'm gonna start two chains over, okay? And so I remember I told you that I had done three single crochets in that corner, so it's actually the middle single crochet. I'm gonna go into the top of that. And when I say the top, that means two loops. Okay, not the front or the back, but, but the very top. And I'm just going to do, um, oh, I'm gonna do a slip stitch with that. Sorry, not a single crochet. So I'm gonna do a slip stitch. Then in the very next chain, I'm gonna do three double crochets. So this pattern for this scallop is we're going to be working in each, the top of each single crochet on the ends of these and we're going to do three double crochets in one chain there and then the next 
one, I'm simply going to do a slip stitch and that just brings it back down and forms that scallop. So you start with a slip stitch, do three double crochets and the very next one, I'm gonna do three double crochets. One, same chain, two, three, okay, and then into the very next one, do a slip stitch. That brings it all the way down. You could do a single crochet in there, your scallops just won't be as tall. Okay, so that's why I like to do the double. So I'm just gonna go ahead and work across here. And if I'm going too fast for you, remember you can always watch this um, part in slow motion on your little settings that looks like a little wheel on the video, you can pull that up and you can watch it in half speed or you know whatever you choose to do. And um, you can always pause it, you can always zoom up and try to see what I'm doing, um, you know, so that you can go at your own speed. Okay, I've just done another set of three double crochets slip stitch in the next one this little scallop really works up fast especially since you're only doing it on the ends you could go ahead and do it all the way around the scarf making it wider but you would have scallops all the way around but i just i don't find that's necessary i like the little sort of the little scallop <laughs> already just from the squircles Let's see, I think I did tell you that, yes, this is T-Rose. I do try to tell you my colors that, you know, that I'm working with. I know that you guys ask that a lot. And again, this is my um, Chunky Thread yarn. It's yarn. It's called Chunky Thread yarn. It's not thread, it's yarn. And um, it's like a baby weight and it's 100% cotton. And it works great for crafts, blankets, clothing, whatever. Speaking of um, clothing, on um, as a child of the 70s, you know. Okay, I'll tell you this in a minute. Let me finish this up and then I'll tell you that little story. So I've got my last three double crochets here and I'm coming to the end. And so I'm just going to finish it in that next chain with a slip stitch okay and then cut that off pull it back up sometimes it's hard for me to see at this angle I want to make sure that you can see in the camera okay so there's your cute little scallops and I just think that adds a nice little finishing touch now you've got two tails here and I just weave them in exactly the same way that I showed you to weave these in between the rolls. And it's just gonna go behind, behind these little double crochets is a good place to hide them. I'll do it one way and I'll do it the other way. And that kind of helps the scallops, gives them a little bit more stability too, to, to stick out like that. And so now I'm finished with that scarf. But the story I wanted to tell you was, this reminded me, I'm like, I don't think I told you this, but it reminded me of my little, uh, the belts that I used to make. So I had um, a favorite pair of jeans in the 70s. It was all hip huggers and, and uh, bell bottom jeans. And I had a favorite pair of jeans and it had really wide belt loops because you know it was really um, popular to wear the really wide, thick leather belts with the big belt buckles. And um, of course, platform shoes. If you were had short legs like I did, if you didn't want to hem your pants, you wore platforms under your bell bottoms and then you felt like you really had long legs. And so, I, you know, I thought I was super cool doing that because I always wanted long legs. <laughs> but anyway, I did um, a granny square belt and I did several of them and wore them and I had friends see them and they wanted that. So I would make some for them because they wanted them. But I just looped it into the belt loops and I did it just like this. And um, if it was a you know, a shorter belt loop, then I would do a two round granny square. I would just kind of make a granny square to however tall the belt loop was and then join them together and just made a long belt and I would just thread it through and then just do a single tie in the belt loop. Now, 
you know, there's so much Granny Square wearing going on right now. So I just think that would be fun. I think this would be a great belt. You wouldn't even have to put it through hip hugger jeans. <laughs> you could just put it, you know, over a top, a dress or whatever, and wears it at a belt as well. So there's a little idea for you. Okay, so that is my little tutorial for the day. I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial about finishing the scarf. I hope you make one or two or several. I, I'm sure I have several more coming in my, you know, in my schedule. At one point, I'd love to do one with just all fall colors, and I would love to do one with just winter colors or Christmas colors. Wouldn't it be fun to just do like reds and greens and golds and chamomiles or something um, for Christmas? I think that would be super fun. And so when I get back for my trip, Next week, I will show you the progress on this pillow. Thanks for joining me, and I'll chat with you later.